Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let's go through differentiator. Guys, these two are important guys. Differentiator and integrator are the most frequently asked questions in our previous year papers. So, try to practice these two things guys really perfectly. Okay. So, basically, for differentiators and integrator, we'll be having two cases guys. The ideal case and the practical case. We'll be going through both in a single video, don't worry. So now in this tutorial, we'll be going through differentiator. So the circuit which produces the differentiation of the input voltage at its output is called as a differentiator. Yeah, guys, that's really true. And that's a small, simple definition. So basically in differentiators, we'll be using capacitor guys. Remember, this is going to be a star point to be noted. We'll be using a capacitor. Okay. So we'll be giving the input the capacitor and from here as this position will be infinity gain so it's going to pass through this one again so we're gonna get the output so i hope everyone can write the points from the first guys the first is nothing but our non in sorry inverting non inverting that's inverting terminal guys okay let me check it so that it will be clear for you and me also basically i cannot say you wrong things okay i'm correct it's inverting terminal guys so inverting amplifier from that inverting amplifier you can just get some points for this guys so the points will be nothing but as the gain in this is infinity as the input impedance even you can say that input impedance is infinity it's not going to allow any further supply into it so it's going to take a diversion path that is nothing but through this to the output through r so that's what i just written in the first topic guys so you can refer the notes from there so Basically, everyone should know this guys. Basically, capacitor. How we can represent the capacitor charge or something? Capacitor charge is Q. Q is nothing but Q is equal to CV. I hope everyone knows this formula guys. This is a popular formula in, in, G, in inter. Okay, Q is equal to CV. So basically, current of a capacitor is indicated with dQ by dt guys. Change in charge with respect to time so dq by dt so we'll be writing for this c so that is nothing but d by dt into c v here i wrote v1 right so input so i wrote i v i so c v i so that is nothing but c cannot be differentiated with respect to time that's a constant value so that comes out c into d v i by dt so i hope everyone got this equation for now so further moving on we got i2 also so i2 is in between vg and v0 so i2 is a resistor so we can write it directly I2 is equals to Vg minus V0 by R. So now I hope everyone got a small idea on this topic. Right guys? So we got something like this. Okay. So now our same process of inverting terminal guys will be applying KCL here. So that we can say that I1 is equals to I2 as I1 is entering and I2 is leaving. So from that we gonna get C D V I D T is equals to minus V naught R. So where V naught is equals to minus R C D V by D T. Okay guys. So R C is a time constant guys. Basically R C is a time constant. If R C is equals to 1 we will be assuming that R C is equals to 1. We can say that V naught is equals to D V I by D T. Okay guys. So if you observe this cleanly what's this guys. If we give input output what's the output. It is nothing but the differentiation of input. So, hence we formed a differentiator guys. It's really clear and simple. So, nothing V0 is equal to minus dV i by dt. Yeah, that's true. So, we got similarly like this. So, the negative sign. If you observe clearly, we are also having that negative sign guys. So, it is 180 degrees phase shift. So, the negative sign indicates that there is a phase shift of 180 degrees between the input and the output. So, now I hope everyone is now 100% clear with differentiator ideal condition so now let us go through the practical condition guys practical condition is also easy but a small bit complex a small complex okay so once we are going through it you'll be having a in detail idea don't worry so basically practical will be something like this guys in the input side huh in the input side we'll be having the resistor and a capacitor in series and in the feedback network, one resistor and one capacitor will be in parallel. Okay, guys, clear? And 
in the non inverting terminal we will be having a resistor rc that's fine okay so now i hope everyone is now 100% clear with the diagram okay further moving on let us assume the current flowing through this is i through this is i1 through this is i2 okay guys 100% clear right okay so we will be assuming this point as v1 this point as v2 so from the concept of virtual ground we can say that v1 and v2 is equals to zero or equal so i'll be assuming that v1 is equals to v2 is equals to zero so fine so initially let me find value of i in between these two so i can say that i is equals to v input minus v a sorry this is v2 okay yeah v2 v input minus v2 by r1 so uh, okay that's r it seems okay that's fine so i'll be writing r okay that's fine so r so as i told you v2 is equals to zero we can directly say that v in is r okay guys so now i hope everyone is now clear with it so now there is a small confusion here guys you i think you got a doubt that how did i neglect this capacitor right there right did you got did you get that doubt okay that's fine now we will be considering these two are in series right so we will be considering them with a variable let us assume that z z1 okay so z1 so we'll be assuming z r and the capacitor in series okay r in series with the capacitor i have told that clearly that's why did i write that so r in series with capacitor so i hope everyone knows the equation of capacitor we can represent it as 1 by j w c1 right so i'll be writing j w as s for this problem for this uh, theorem so i'll be writing s is equal to j w so i'll be directly writing 1 by s c1 so by taking the LCM, we can say that 1 plus SR1C1 by SC1. Okay, guys. So I, I we got V in by R. This R is nothing but Z1, guys. You can write it Z1 also. That's fine. So V in by R, that is nothing but V in into SCR. I have substituted the value plus SR1C1. Okay, guys. So now I hope everyone is now 100% clear, guys. There is no more confusion, guys. Okay. Okay. Further moving on to I1. So I hope everyone can write the equation for I1 as that's an resistor. So here it will be V2 and here it will be VO. Okay, V out. Okay. V2 minus V out by RF. That's what it's right here. V2 minus V naught by RF. Yeah, that's clear. So as we all know that V2 is equals to zero, I1 is nothing but minus V out by RF. Okay, guys. Further moving on to IT. Here the main game starts. Okay, guys, I frequently use the word. Okay, that's fine. So this is V2, V0. Okay, so we are writing for this, right? So in the previous video, I have told you that the charge of this is equals to Q is equals to CV, right? Okay, so basically CV. Okay, that's fine. So I will represent I2, right? I2 is equals to DQ by DT. So we're going to write CF, okay? For this CF into D into voltage that is nothing but the change in the voltage nothing that is nothing but v2 minus v out by what's the time v dt okay guys so this is how we got the v2 value that's how i have just written it directly guys so that i hope everyone can understand that so i2 is equals to cf d v2 minus v naught by dt v output or v naught guys that's fine so once we substitute v2 equals to zero we're gonna get this Okay, minus CF DV naught by DT. Okay, guys. So now I hope everyone have everyone got a small idea. So now for this, if we apply the Laplace transforms, guys, guys, this is a concept of mathematics. We'll be applying Laplace transforms to convert the differentiation or integration parts into a normal equation. See, here there is a differentiation part, but there is no differentiation part here. So that converted like this. So it is going to differentiate one time like that. You need to identify it so basically minus will become b minus cf cf okay dv naught by dt it is going to replace by sv naught by in, in terms of s okay so that's how we got this equation so now applying kcl as usual at node a at node a we are going to apply excuse me kcl so we're gonna get i is equals to i1 plus i2 so that's how we got i is equals to i1 plus i2 so we'll be substituting the three values of i i1 and i2 the reason why I have changed the applied Laplace transform is that here 
we are having differentiation part so just to convert it into normal form so i have just done that so we have just we if you observe clearly everything is normal without any differentiation so here i can take v out common or v out of s common so we are, i took it common so i got like this so i'll be sending that that side so i got like this so here for just for my assumption i'll be taking r1 c1 is equals to rf cf so r1 c1 okay it's going to change here this part and this part is going to combine combine it's going to multiply so once we multiply that we're gonna get this equation guys you need to take a piece of paper and practice guys only then you can understand and remember these things okay so, so we got this so let us assume that cf c1 cf into c1 is very 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 greater than c1 c2 okay this is not a cf okay okay sorry that's correct only rf and c1 is very very greater than r1 c1 or rf cf so by converting this we can make this as our main equation from now on as this part is really really small that's what we just tried to say right c r f f c f f sorry r f and c f are very very less when compared to r f and c1 so i will be completely neglecting this term to zero so i got this equation okay so for this if we apply laplace transform to remove this s we're gonna get v out is equals to r f s c1 into d by dt v in of t in terms of t so this will be our equation so if we assume this is equals to 1 we are gonna get our basic equation that is nothing but d by dt of v input that is nothing but this so in this condition also it is negative but the value is accurately correct so we can say that this is a good differentiator in ideal and practical conditions so guidelines there are some basic guidelines of construction guys or designing of this differentiator so choose the frequency as the highest frequency of the input signal okay we have to choose that c1 should be less than 1 new f okay choose fb as 10 times of fa frequency of b is very very greater than fa okay that's fine so calculate r1 and r2 from the expression r1 into r2 is equals to rf into cf so how can we calculate it okay we'll be trying to calculate it okay so now i hope everyone got a small idea on differentiator so in the next tutorial we'll be going through integrator thank you thanks for watching